good at all as he's virtually cheered off. Virtually cheered off. Virtually cheered off by his own fans. 27th of October 2019. This was the moment that Arsenal captain Granit Xhaka was booed off the pitch by his own fans as he took his merry time to complete his substitution. Needless to say, he gave as good as he got. Less than a week later, he had been stripped of the captaincy, and with relations between the player and the club and its supporters at an all time low, looked for all the world like his three season stay at the Gunners was coming to a sad, sad end. Fast forward to today, and Xhaka is a man reborn. In the midst of his best ever season, he has been a key player in helping Arsenal to mount their most serious title challenge in years and has been praised widely for his performances and attitude. How did this happen? When Xhaka signed for Arsenal in 2016 for a reported £35 million from Bundesliga side Borussia Mönchengladbach, he wasn't arriving with a reputation for being the most level-headed or even-tempered of players. In fact, his disciplinary record was one of the absolute worst in Europe. Across his four seasons in Germany, he had picked up a staggering 35 yellow and 6 red cards, with three of those sending offs coming in his final Bundesliga season. Compare that with N'Golo Kante, a similar player that was heavily linked with Arsenal and almost joined the club but for exorbitant agent fees which Arsenal weren't willing to pay would only been sent off once in his senior career up to that point. They were, however, getting one of the most talented holding midfielders in Europe, a combative ball winner who helped control the tempo of games with his accurate passing. Xhaka was said to add some much needed steel to a midfield which had been perceived as rather soft. And I think Arsene Wenger got exactly what he was expecting with Xhaka in his first season as the Swiss had a very solid if unspectacular debut campaign for the Gunners. His exceptional passing accuracy actually improved, going from 85.1% in the Bundesliga the previous year to 89.5% in the Premier League. Albeit, he was making on average 10 fewer passes per game, only 72 compared to nearly 83 a match for Gladbach. He also brought the bite and battle that Arsenal were crying out for, making 2.4 tackles a game and 1.4 interceptions. This was more tackles than Matthew Flamini, someone who was asked to play in a similar role, had managed the previous season, although Xhaka didn't intercept the ball as much as the Frenchman. Overall, pretty solid numbers defensively, although nowhere near as impressive as Kante, who had a standout season for Chelsea winning the league and making 3.6 tackles, 2.4 interceptions and 1.4 clearances a game. What was interesting about Xhaka's stats was that he actually made significantly less fouls in the EPL than he did in the Bundesliga. This metric dropped from 2.6 a game in 2015-16 to 1.2 in 16-17. His knack for catching cards hadn't diminished however, as he picked up 5 yellows and was given an early bath twice in his debut season. Although those two sending offs were considered a little harsh, with some fans feeling he was a victim of poor refereeing. Xhaka, as is his tendency, also scored a few screamers and was a key figure in Arsenal's FA Cup triumph. All in all, a successful debut campaign for the Swiss. The following season was a disappointing one as the fans began to turn against legendary manager Arsene Wenger due to some heavy defeats and insipid and gutless performances from many of the players. They endured some bruising losses to their big six rivals, a 4-0 hammering at the hands of Liverpool. I stood up there and I felt embarrassed. Mm. Welcome to how I felt for a long time. And 3-1 defeats against Man City and Man United, along with embarrassing results against the like of Stoke and Watford, angered the fans. I've had enough, mate. Oh, if everyone had enough, I'll wake up. And while the bulk of their rage and disgust was reserved for and directed at the anonymous Mesut Ozil and the increasingly out of his depth and past his best looking banger, Shaka did not escape unscathed as he was mistake prone and often ineffective in the middle of the park, proving not to be the on-field leader and lieutenant that many had hoped. Ultimately, the performances and results were so poor and the cries of Wenger out, Wenger out, say we want Wenger out got so loud and persistent that the board couldn't ignore it any longer, putting Wenger out of his misery in January, informing the Frenchman that his contract would be terminated at the end of the season, which Arsenal would finish sixth. Former PSG and Sevilla manager Unai Emery would have been in, uh... was the man chosen to begin the post-Wenger era. He was a proven winner who had enjoyed unprecedented Europa League success with Sevilla, lifting Europe's second most prodigious competition three times in a row. Hope and expectations that the Spaniard would quickly turn things around and start to get a 
fortune out of some of Arsenal's underperforming stars may have risen briefly, as after a difficult start, with the Gunners losing to two of their top four rivals, Man City and Chelsea respectively, they went on a seven game winning run in the Prem, lifting them up to fourth in the league. Despite the impressive results, these were still early days for Emery and there were clearly some issues for him to solve, especially defensively, and it seemed that he was not getting the best out of Xhaka, with fans slating some of his early performances, and the wheels did indeed start to come off as the season wore on with some turgid draws and another heavy defeat against Liverpool. But some of these are brain dead. They have no game management whatsoever. I'm shit and I can still play better. Arsenal would be dumped out of the League Cup and then the FA Cup by Spurs and Man U respectively. Emery did one up Wenger in terms of league position as they narrowly missed out on a top four place, heartbreakingly being pipped to a Champions League spot by only a single point by their bitter rival Spurs. He also went one better than his predecessor in Europe, making it to the final of the Europa League, only to be soundly humped by Chelsea, with the whole team being slammed for their gutless performance. Statistically, Xhaka had one of his worst seasons, making the fewest times tackles and having the worst pass accuracy of his time at the club, although still pretty good at 85%. Hey, at least he never got sent off. In the summer of 2019, Arsenal captain Lauren Koscielny left the club, leaving a void in the leadership role which on 27th September, Unai Emery announced would be filled by Granit Xhaka, a player who had been temporarily taking the armband up until that point. The initial reaction was not good, with fans pointing out his ill-discipline and generally underwhelming and substandard performances over the last couple of seasons, and that ill feeling have been building at the start of the season with a vocal and enthusiastic section of the support jeering him as he was subbed off against Aston Villa. The captaincy decision was also the subject of much criticism due to how it was taken, with Unai Emery deciding to show that he was the cool, approachable guy who listens, and he arranged a secret vote for his players to decide who would take the armband permanently. This was honestly bonkers from Emery, and just screams of weakness. He clearly favoured Xhaka in that leadership role. Just have the fucking balls to appoint him captain yourself, rather than some stupid school council shit, which just puts Xhaka even more under pressure and in the spotlight than he was before. If the vote was given to the fans, Xhaka wouldn't have got a look in, as he picked up only 5% of the votes from 40,000 in a Sky Sports poll. This whole situation was destined to end in tears, and it did. Exactly a month after his permanent captaincy was announced, Xhaka's substitution was cheered by the fans and they subsequently booed him as he trundled off the field. Tired of their recent treatment of him, Xhaka gave as good as he got, cupping his hand to his ears and telling them to fuck off. Emery publicly denounced Xhaka's actions and criticised his captain in another display of spineless management. The club announced that Xhaka would be offered counselling and proceeded to strip him of a captaincy which was doomed from the start. It looked certain that Xhaka would be leaving the club in the January window. However, following a poor run of results, most notably being dumped out of the League Cup in the fourth round by Liverpool, Emery was given the sack and promptly replaced with Man City assistant manager Mikel Arteta in December. The timing of the appointment allowed Arteta to speak with Xhaka let the player know that he was a major part of his plans and convince him to stick around. When you arrived, was he close to leaving? I think he was. At least he had some thoughts about that possibility in his in his head and we just tried to convince him to, to give himself and the club another opportunity. After that, he started to show some improvements in his game and the trust and faith shown in him worked wonders on the player's confidence. And remarkably, less than a year after he was on the verge of an acrimonious exit, Xhaka was a standout performer for Arsenal in the FA Cup final victory over Chelsea. The process of turning the fortunes of the club around in the league was to be a more lengthy and complicated one. Luckily, the board were willing to have faith in their young manager and trust that process, even if the large majority of reactionary fans were not. Arteta, out, now! And Arteta was given time to work his magic and start to transform Xhaka into more of a box-to-box -box player, with an emphasis on him being a greater influence in the final third, as has shown by his improving attacking stats last season. That transformation has been complete this year, as Xhaka is just one of many Arsenal players who have been playing out of their skin as Arsenal mount their most credible assault on the title in years. With Thomas Partey excellently playing the more defensive-minded midfield role, the shackles have come off Xhaka and he is thriving. He has five assists to his name and three goals, his best offensive contribution in an Arsenal shirt. He has also notably been asked to play less passes than ever before at Arsenal, with an emphasis on quality rather than quantity as he is making 1.4 key passes a game and is much more regularly seen bursting into the box trying to make things happen for Arsenal in front of goal. His new role in the side seems also to have transformed his disciplinary issues, as this season he has only picked up three yellows, hasn't been sent off at all and is actually the recipient of more fouls than he commits. 
Hurts. It is not only off the pitch that his influence is being felt, as although it is Martin Odegaard who is wearing the captain's armband, Xhaka has emerged as a real leader for the Gunners, demanding the best from his teammates and rallying the troops as the title race is sure to go down to the wire with Man City. I am sure that I am not the only neutral who hopes that the Gunners can do it, and I personally think that they will. They have been virtually faultless all season, and having mentality monsters like Xhaka in the squad is invaluable. It would also be wonderful to see Xhaka go from being abused by his own fans to being a key reason that Arsenal left their first league title in almost 20 years.